Mr. is it recording no lisha <coughs> in this present session we shall be discussing various type of reciprocating pumps like piston pump plunger pump and diaphragm pump we are going to discuss the type of the pump working principle of the pump components of the pump lubrication uses valve type assembly a stroke adjustment a stuffing boxes and a stuffing box problem a spare parts required and rectification <clears throat> reciprocating pump is a positive displacement pump which reciprocates the pumping element that it moves uh, in a linear motion and <clears throat> a this pumping element may be a piston a plunger or a diaphragm the capacity is proportional to the speed it is independent of the discharge pressure means the capacity is always same whatever is the discharge pressure and that's why it is called positive displacement pump <clears throat> these pumps can be a piston pump with single or double stroke a plunger pump a diaphragm pump a single a stroke pump have got a pulsating flow is means that the flow is sometime increasing and sometime <coughs> decreasing here what let us see the advantages of a reciprocating pump it can be double acting also with this appropriate valving for a given pumping mass and number of pumping stroke capacity is more than a plunger pump single acting duplex triple reduces the pulsation there are certain limitations and limitations are that pressure differential is limited due to the internal moving seal that is the piston seal this has got a poor tolerance to the abrasive fluid due to internal moving seal that is the piston seal and the flow is pulsating the flow is less than half cycle for a single stroke now let us look toward the various components so on right hand side you can see this is the crank shaft and then crank shaft is connected to the cross head through a connecting rod the purpose of cross head is to convert the circular motion <coughs> of the crank shaft to the linear motion now cross set has got piston rod connected to it and which is connected to the piston and then the piston has got the seals which we call piston ring when the pumps moves towards the right hand side is there suction the suction valve opens and liquid flows in and when the pump moves towards the left hand side that is the discharge side the discharge valve opens and liquid get discharged on the bottom we are able to see a double acting <coughs> piston pump here when the left hand side is on suction the right hand side discharges and when the right side is on suction the left hand discharges the fluid <coughs> recip now let us talk about the plunger pumps in plunger pump <clears throat> the piston is replaced by a plunger that is a solid plunger having a, a stationary extractional seals li and limited to these plunger pumps can be only single acting it cannot be double acting it can handle greater solid and the differential pressure that is the difference between suction and discharge pressure is much more than a piston pump most of these piston pumps are mul multiplex it means that there are so many pumps operating from the same crank shaft which you will see later now the pumping speed is limited to 50 feet per minute maximum by except and by exceptional seal life also is governed by frequency of flow per pulsation what is the net positive suction head available what is the viscosity of the liquid and what is the surface speed and what is the pressure drop across the pump means the which drop due to the some leakage through the between 
through the plunger from discharge side to the suction side because plunger has got a running clearance. Now let us look about the various <coughs> components of a plunger pump. Similar to the reciprocating pump, this has got a crank shaft and this which the crank shaft has got bearing crank shaft. Then crank shaft is connected to the cross head through a connecting rod. This is the connecting rod through which it is connected and con cross head is lubricated <coughs> through the wire which comes through these holes from the crank shaft to the cross head. Now cross head is connected to the plunger <coughs> and the plunger moves on linear on left and right side. When the plunger moves on left hand side, the suction valve opens and liquid comes in, fills the cavity and when the plunger moves on left hand side, the discharge valve opens, suction valve closes and the liquid get discharged. <coughs> this is the, if you want, this end from that is where the pump is there, we call liquid end and the right hand where the crankshaft is there, we call it power end. <clears throat> now, in this animation, we are able to see a multiplex <clears throat> plunger pump. This pump has got three plungers operating on a single crankshaft and each one has got an angle of 120 degree. So, there is always a discharge from the pump. You can see that how the dis suction valve is opening, how and then how the discharge valve is opening when suction valve is closing. So, this pump will give much more flow and the pulsation will be much less in this case. Now, the another type in the reciprocating pump is the diaphragm pump. A in a diaphragm pump, in a diaphragm pump, what a, a crank or a cross, it is or it is connected through connecting rod, and then finally <clears throat> there is a plunger. This is the plunger which pushes the diaphragm. It is the plunger which pushes the diaphragm and diaphragm moves on left and right hand side. When the diaphragm moves on left hand side, the suction valve open liquid comes in. When the diaphragm moves on right hand side, the discharge valve opens, suction valve closes and liquid goes out. So the diaphragm pump is connected to the shaft as a reciprocating element in power pumps or diaphragm reciprocates with the help of a moting fluid in between in direct acting pumps. These pumps are very useful for corrosive fluid as only diaphragm designed for process fluid comes in contact. There is no stuffing box that is the gland sealing is required <coughs> here. It can be single or double acting. The efficiency is low, but this is very good pump for clean fluids only. <clears throat> Here we can see some components of a diaphragm pump. So <clears throat> this is a cam or crankshaft. Now this is moving. Mo this is moving the plunger. This is reciprocating plunger towards left and right, and there is a, a spring. The job of a spring is to bring that plunger to the left and the job of the eccentric cam is to push the plunger towards the right. When the plunger is pushed towards the right, now this diaphragm moves towards the right. It takes discharge when the plunger moves on left hand side, the suction ball open and liquid comes in. There, here we can see a knob. With this knob, we can adjust the speed of the plunger. <clears throat> when we unscrew it, we take it on left hand side, then the stroke will be more, the pump will discharge more and when we move it clockwise and this goes inside, the liquid coming out per stroke will be reducing. <clears throat> In this <clears throat> 
slide, we are able to see a double diaphragm pump. This is called control vol <coughs> volume pump with hydraulic actuated double diaphragm. Now, sometime we are handling certain corrosive or toxic fluid and it's they if they leak there can be a very big hazard in that case what we are doing we are putting two diaphragms this is one diaphragm here and this is the second diaphragm and there is a while there is a while filled between the two diaphragm the plunger pushes the oil and the oil pushes the diaphragm and that's how this pump operates when the, it is pushed on right hand side, discharge valve open, liquid get discharged. When, when again it is pushed on left hand side, when it goes, moves on the left hand side, the suction valve open and the, this cavity gets filled. <clears throat> now let us talk about the lubrication. All bearings on crankshaft and crosshead are lubricated with the shaft driven main oil pump that we will be seeing in the assembly drawing and <clears throat> electrically driven auxiliary oil pump is used to start up if the shaft driven male oil pump pressure is low it is always kept on auto <clears throat> a start while coolers are provided in the crankcase to cool the oil <clears throat> now let us talk about the stuffing box or the seal on the shaft so let us first talk on the top most right hand type drawing. So we see that you see when the shaft is coming out, when the shaft is coming out here, always there will be some clearance between the shaft and the body of the pump and the liquid will come here. So for that reason, we put the gland packings we are putting the gland packings here and what we see here this we call lantern ring actually and from here the seal fluid seal flushing fluid comes in from here and does the sealing of this ring so that it doesn't get over <clears throat> heated and through these two nuts we we will be able to adjust the compression of the pitch, the seals so that the leakage is avoided. <clears throat> here on the left hand side, we can say, you see here the pump, the whatever is the pressure in the pump, it is acting here. And then this pressure is taken by this liquid. This is connection for the flushing and this is this we call a stuffing box this is a stuffing box area and then this is called the gland follower this or this is the called the gland follower through which we tie through the nut <clears throat> now let us see some valves on used on the reciprocating pump you see both the suction and discharge valve of the reciprocating pumps are non return valves so suction valve open <coughs> inside the pump discharge valve opens outside the pump and you see this is the this is where this is the valve which will sit here it will be sitting here and then doing the sealing like this this is the metallic one there are different type of um, valves we are using and say here if you see this is called double ported this has got two ports it is a disc valve loaded with the spring this is so <clears throat> a spring will close the valve and the pressure of the fluid will open the valve this is another view of this and if we see the if the detail is like this now you see this is the valve seat this is the we call wavering actually the actual sitting takes place here this is the valve body this is the valve in there. This, this portion comes and sits here. This is the spring which keeps it closed and this is the spring retainer. So we put everything together and screwed it and that makes the complete valve. <clears throat> now let us see how the stroke of the pump can be <coughs> adjusted. So now there are two types of 
doing it you see one is here one you know, in the top we see you see what happens this this will move in this slot this will move in this slot this is the position where the stroke is minimum but if we move it down then what will happen when we move it down a stroke will go on increasing another method is here so here what we do is that this rod we move up or down here on the crank shaft so when what happens when you move it on the up side the length will increase the stroke will increase when you move it inside toward the center the stroke will be <coughs> lesser now let us talk about the different parts which is required for the frequent replacement these parts are stuffing box packing cylinder liner for piston piston rod piston ring plunger <clears throat> sometime plunger uh, life can be increased by the hard coating also bearings there are main bearings big end bearing and a small end bearing for the connecting uh, and cross head bearings so let us see some of the part this is actually how the inside of the crank shaft will look crank case will look this is the crank shaft this is the crank shaft and this projection steels how many connecting rods or how many <coughs> pistons or plungers are going to be connected so here you see 1 2 3 4 here we we can connect four of them this is the cross head which is the cross head which is connected to the crank shaft through this <coughs> this is the connecting rod through the connecting rod this bearing which sits on the crank shaft is called big end and this is called a, a small end this is the cross end and these are the bearings main bearings used on the crank shaft <coughs> now this is the piston this is the piston and this is the piston ring which is sitting in on the piston in these groups <coughs> so if we see the assembly complete assembly <coughs> let us see the complete assembly here this is the actually this is cross it on this this connecting rod is put like this and then this side cover because cover is put here and then it is locked <coughs> through this wire lock wire so that The, due to the vibration it never get loose on this side the small end bearing is it is basically inserted inside the cross head and through the cross head screw it is <coughs> tied here the lubrication takes place how the lubrication takes place for the cross head because cross head has also got a bearing on top and bottom this is called sliding bearing the while from the shaft of the crank shaft which has got a hole passes through these holes and this is lubrication hole and comes here and it lubricates the cross head piston rod is connected here at through this nut we can adjust the length of the piston rod as required <coughs> now let us look after some problems <coughs> in the reciprocating pump one of the problem is the vibration of the frame main frame vibration at different points then rod drop rod run out we will see what it is cross head vibrations then components failure what are the component connecting rod cylinder liner piston ring what sometime valve temperature may be problem and the gland leakage these are the problems now we will see how we measure the rod drop and run out so you see rod drop and run out rod is can be measured in both horizontal and vertical direction to measure in horizontal direction here what we do on the rod on in on the horizontal direction we put a dial gauge and take 
it to the extreme end, one end. We take to the extreme end the piston. We took to the extreme end and make the dial gauge there and then rotate it by hand and you take it to the extreme rate and we got two readings. So we record those two readings. For vertical run out, we will have to place the dial gauge in a vertical position and again we will have to move the first the piston root <coughs> towards one end let it come up to the end make the dial gauge do and then again move break it to the other end and note down the reading you will get these different readings now this is the formula how you will calculate the run out how we will calculate the rod draw so first you have to measure the rod range rod range is from the cross head eh, up to the piston and then the a stroke a stroke means how much is the movement total movement of the <coughs> piston eh, in each a stroke so if you have to put both on the uh, a paper chart paper and then this is the reading you got this is a drop this is the reading delta drop this is the reading you got in the dial gauge you put that here and your formula is a stroke divided by rod, rod length a stroke divided by rod length is equal to run out divided by the drop or we can say that run out is equal to whatever is the differential drop divided by rod, rod length into a stroke. So, <clears throat> and what is differential drop is equal to cylinder running clearance minus cross head running clearance divided by 2. <clears throat> so, there are certain allowable run outs <clears throat> standard, as per the standard. That depends on what is the bore or what is the whole size of the <coughs> your cylinder. And if the bore size is less, smaller than 6 inch, then maximum on positive side run out allowed is 0 0.004 <coughs> inch and 0 0.006 inch. And maximum in both the cases is 0 0.0017. <coughs> if uh, for 6 inch, more 6 inch and larger than 6 inch maximum run out allowable is 0 0.006 and positive run out and maximum negative run out is 0 0.0017. <clears throat> so, thank you very much for your listening. I have already put two more videos on pump, on centrifugal pump and rotary pumps and their links are given here. I will request you to go through those videos also. Thank you very much. Bye. <clears throat>